Okay, we're in the engine compartment of a 1957 Oldsmobile 88. Um, very, very special car here. This particular car houses an engine that's called a J2. And in the 50s, other than the Chrysler products, there's nothing that ran with this guy. This thing is 371 cubic inches. It has a tri-power setup. Same tri-power setup they ended up using on the uh, 40, uh, um, 348 Chevys. But it has a trio of Rochester carburetors on it, on a cast iron intake manifold on it, and a huge air cleaner. That was a very special engine. It had a different cam in it. It made a little over 300 horsepower, depends on what advertisement you would read, but it was always 300 to, I think, 315 or somewhere they advertised it. Uh, heavy duty radiator in it, power steering, power brakes. They didn't even know what discs were back then, so it definitely had drum brakes all four corners. Car's never been bumped anywhere. The core support and everything is all intact. All the structural integrity is intact the way it was in 57 when this car was released. Original horn still intact on the vehicle. It's got a new huge battery to turn this guy over and get it started. The structural bracing from Oldsmobile is still intact. The heater is still hooked up just the way it should be for the uh, passenger compartment. Again, this is a very special engine. This isn't just a run of the mill uh, engine for a car in the 50s. This guy was very special. The horsepower that it produced, and not so much horsepower, but the torque. These were a long stroke engine that just produced gobs of torque at that period of time. And very few cars could run with this guy. It was General Motors uh, kind of premier car to take and, and, and just run with anything out there on the market. And it did too. Fantastic engine compartment. There's no leaks evident whatsoever on the uh, valve pan either side. Of course, it still houses the original uh, cast iron exhaust manifolds and, like I said, the original intake manifold also. There's no leaks evident anywhere around the fuel pump area, the uh, timing chain, water pump cover. Um, everything looks to be good on this vehicle. There's absolutely nothing. And actually, if you start looking at it, it still has the original cream and white paint underneath this hood. It's been dusted over on the outside, of course, to the higher luster than they ever had back in the 50s. But it does have its original uh, paint from 1957 yet. Great looking car, fantastic engine, correct air cleaner for it, can correct identification on it, J2 Rocket Oldsmobile, they called their vehicles Rocket. And they, um, just a fantastic engine compartment. There it is, Oldsmobile. Hi, you're Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today we got a really special guest for you on the floor. Normally we don't play with 50s cars, but this guy is so special, we just had to present it to you. It could not pass on this vehicle. This thing is a 1957 Oldsmobile 88, but it has a very special power plant. It's called a J2. Fantastic piece of equipment back in that era. Let's go over it and see what we can show you on it. The chrome on the center of this is just as nice as you'd ever want to find, uh, just as it was when it was new. Paint on the car is really, really great. It's uh, better than a driver quality. The fitment of the hood to the front fender, to the cowl area, which is a, a brushed stainless uh, uh, cowl panel in the front there. Uh, gap the whole way around this guy is just as nice as you'd want. Again, the uh, Oldsmobile designation on the front really nice and clean chrome on it. Front top of the bumper, just as nice a chrome as you'd ever want to find. A couple of MiG-21s, one on each fender there. Uh, Oldsmobile's uh, designation for their rocket cars, they put uh, a rocket type airplane on it and at that point in time I think it was a MiG-21 that they patterned it after. Chrome around the uh, headlight basils is just as sweet as you'd ever want to find. Both of them. Chrome on the top of the bumper could not be any nicer than it is. Again, the hood fitment, the fender fitment, and bear in mind back then most of these cars didn't fit where the crap, but this guy does a pretty good job of fitting together just the way it should. The grill area, uh, aluminum, they didn't know anything about plastic much back then, so it is aluminum and it is nice. Oldsmobile um, name across the front of it. Bottom part of the bumper and bumper alignment. It's 
just as nice as you'd want to find. The bottom part of the bumper is really, really nice. The chrome on it is very, very nice. Marker lights are a little bit milky, but they are the original lenses on these uh, turn signal indicators on the front. So they, they are original. There's a little milkiness to the glass or plastic or whatever it may be. And this era is probably glass. I don't know. Uh, oh, a little piece of chrome tape on that edge. I wonder if there's one over here. And there is here too, and I see why. The chrome on the bottom part, this is a two-part bumper here, top and the bottom. Chrome on the bottom part of this bumper is starting to peel a little bit here on the corner. On both sides, I don't know why, but it is. On both sides, yep. Piece of chrome tape to hide that. Uh, bumper's not rusted through or anything, it's just it's chrome starting to deteriorate, and I think that's why they put the chrome on there. Uh, just want you to know that there are a couple imperfections, one on each side of the lower part of that front bumper. Again, the bumper alignment, just as sweet as can be, the aluminum grille. The whole front end of this car is just as nice as you could ever hope for a car uh, back in the 50s. Chrome, everything is excellent on it. Let's go down driver's side, see what we can show you there. Okay, driver's side of our 88 Rocket Oldsmobile. Uh, again, check this trim on this thing. No door dents or anything whatsoever in it. Nice and polished stainless, just the way it should be. Door fitment to the front fender, to the rocker panel. Check that out. That is very, very, very nice. Fantastic condition. Brush stainless across the front of the towel area for air intake for the uh, ventilation system. The original wiper arms, incorrect blades. These blades are off of a, uh, a newer car. They're an argent color. They should be a uh, finely polished stainless. Tinted glass in this guy. Doesn't appear to have a sun fade shade in it, but it is tinted. Appears to be on the sides also. The trim around the base of the, or the surround of the windshield, really nice. There's no dents, no marks whatsoever. The uh, vents for the uh, uh, windshield defroster are really nice. The, the metal that houses them is just as clean and clear and original also. It doesn't appear to have ever been off the car. Original dashboard on it, still resilient. From the looks of it, there's no cracks whatsoever. Um, there are no warps or waves or anything in it either. Really nice uh, padded dash in this guy. Very, very nice. We got a set of spotlights that are operated manually from the inside of the vehicle. These were an option on a lot of cars back in the uh, uh, 50s. They're a great addition. They're stainless steel and they really, really light up the road or anything else that you want to look at. Rear view mirror, the way they used to put them on, the Oldsmobiles in the uh, 50s, one on each side. You got two mirrors. You got two. You notice it, it is a cream color on it. It's a great looking combination here, this cream. And uh, I don't know the actual color. I'm going to call it Porsche Meteor Gray. That's what it looks like. Paint on the car is just absolutely phenomenal. The, the roof, there's no deviations, no marks, absolutely nothing. No defects whatsoever on the paint. Chrome around the window, which is completely housed in, in, in uh, chrome plated metal. The window frames and the wing area, all the chrome is just as nice as can possibly be. And check this out. Look at the fitment of the window from the front window to the back window. All the stainless is nice as could ever be hoped for. Your window wipes are... Guess what? They're original and you would not replace them. There's a little bit of wear, there's a little dryness to them, but they're still functional and uh, I would definitely not think about replacing them. Original door handle, a little tiny bit of patina on the door handle here where you open it. A little bit of wear through the years, but again, originality, you certainly would not want to replace them. Absolutely not. Okay, door to the quarter panel. A little bit of an overhang here. This door could actually go in yeah, it could go in just a hair. We need to adjust that just a little tiny bit. Certainly within production standards, but it could go in just a hair and we could do that. Tin. Check this out. No Bondo anywhere. It's all tin. A trio of rear lights in it. It has two on the side and a main one in the center. And also the trim around that is... 
absolutely as sweet as you could find. There's no marks, no dents, nothing whatsoever on it. Single rear seat speaker, uh, which would be kind of standard equipment on these vehicles back then. The hatch shelf is just as nice and fresh as you'd ever want to find. Uh, everything appears to be original on this car too, by the way, interior-wise. I did get a quick look at it. Um, no marks whatsoever on this trim down the sides. It's amazing through all the years that no one slammed the door over open on this thing. Of course, he didn't have Walmarts back then, so I guess it survived because of that. Rear bumper fitment, you can see it just goes around. It's a huge set of bumpers on this car, front and back. 14-inch wheels, white walls the way they should be, and original Oldsmobile hubcaps that go with this vehicle. Uh, great looking setup, a lot of originality, wheels painted uh, orangish red, just the way they should be to match the accent on the uh, uh, side of the vehicle. And uh, again, great color combination. A uh, little, couple little marks on the uh, base of the front bumper surround where it, where it curved uh, to back at the sides. A uh, little door adjustment and that's it. We haven't found anything else and the paint on this thing is absolutely beautiful. Let's go out the back seat we can show you there. Okay, rear deck of our 88 Oldsmobile. That is spot on. There is absolutely no way you could ever ask for a rear deck to fit better than that is. No matter if it's on a Camaro or a Chevelle or a Roadrunner or whatever, it does not get any better than the fitment of that rear deck to the rear quarter panels. Again, the Oldsmobile designation uh, on the uh, center on the back to match the one in the front. The paint on this car is just stunning. This gray has a lot of depth to it. It really, really has a lot of look to it. Fantastic. Chrome on the bumper, bumper fitment. Very nice fitment on this guy. You know, very, very nice. Chrome on it is uh, just exemplary. I can't imagine it could be any better. These bumpers were so large that uh, they had to do them in sections. Like the front one has a top and a bottom section. This one has a center section and a left and a right. Um, and it goes up part way, probably a foot and a half up the side of the car from the rear. Chrome around the taillights themselves, absolutely no patina whatsoever. Lens is nice and clear. Uh, backup lens is the same way. It doesn't get any better than that. That is absolutely fantastic. And check this out, instead of just dumping this down, this is a high-end car back in the 50s. The exhaust comes out of two grates, one on each side of the bumper. So you just don't have turn downs in the back or exhaust out the back. They actually exit through the bumper itself. Really nice high-end touch to this vehicle. Even the trim around. Wow. See, this continues on around the uh, backup lights. And that trim also is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. So the back end of this car is really spot on. You're not going to get it much better than it is. One more side to go. Okay, passenger side of our Oldsmobile 88 J2 car. Again, check this trim out. I can't believe there's no door dents in this. Absolutely none. Totally amazing. All tin. Absolutely no Bondo, no filler whatsoever. Again, the... Uh, Trim around the back window on this side, same as the other side. No marks, no dinghies. Tinted glass again. No marks or anything on the glass. The glass itself is very, very nice. All the fitment, all the seals around the uh, uh, trim around the base window in the back. Just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Wow, what a great car. Fantastic condition. Um, drip rail, but it's painted. There's no uh, stainless on it. I don't know if that was an option back in the 50s or if this is the way they came, but at any rate, it's painted. Again, the chrome around the windows, which are tinted glass, just as nice as you'd ever want. Whisker wipes the same as the other side, original, but don't need to be uh, addressed in any way. Dry, uh, passenger side mirror, got to have that, and it's here. 
This crow is beautiful around these wing areas, just absolutely beautiful. And look at this again. Same thing on this side, the window fitment and the chrome that houses this glass, both front and rear. It's just as fresh and nice as you'd ever hope to find. Okay, quarter to door. This guy's right on the money. Look at that. Again, another original door handle, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Door to the uh, rocker panel to the front fender. Again, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. I can't believe I didn't find any dents in this uh, side trim yet. But I haven't, not yet. Absolutely none. That's the whole way up. Again, our right hand uh, spotlight that goes along with that side over there. Trim around the base of the windshield. Same as the other side. This car's in fantastic condition. It really is. Other than a repaint on the outside, I can't see anything that uh, that's been compromised through the years at all under the hood or on the vehicle itself. It's a really great car. Nice fitment. Just tin everywhere. I like those hubcaps and the orangish red accents on the side of the car, the inset, and also on the wheels. It really makes it stand out a lot. Great looking vehicle. Um, very rare car. It's a 57 Olds 88 with a J2 package, which is the Tri Power uh, 371 cubic inch, 300 plus horsepower engine, which was a ton of ponies at that point of time. If you had a car with 300 horsepower, you're really saying something. Um, the car's a little on the heavy side. It's a lot of originality to it. Uh, a lot of high-end chrome on the vehicle. Everywhere you look, this thing is accentuated with chrome, front, back, sides, and everything is just as it should be. A couple little tiny marks on the base that surround the um, base part of the front bumper, and I think that's about it. Uh, that's the only imperfections I could find on the car anywhere. Uh, again, it's a very rare car. You're not going to find these all over the place. They produced some of them. I think they only made that motor a couple years. I'm going to say 57 and 58, but I'm not sure of that. And um, I know it was a very special engine. They really were outperformers. They really, really outperformed just about anything else out there except the Mopar stuff at that point. So this is a car to really take a look at if you're into a 50s muscle car, because that's what this guy was. And it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. We encourage everybody to come down, take a look at it, see it in person. We'll put it up on a rack. You can drive it. You can go over it. Whenever we're dealing with cars that are 60 years old, um, you know, we want to make sure that everyone's happy with their purchase. And this car is going to make somebody a very, very happy uh, customer. All right. This is the passenger compartment of our J2 Rocket Oldsmobile. And uh, from what I can see, and I'm not going to say everything is 100% original, I'm not sure about the hat rack, but everything else appears to be the original interior in this car. I really can't tell you that it's been replaced, but I can't tell you that it hasn't either. But to me, it does appear to be original. Dashboard is still nice and resilient. It's a hand-sewn dash. You can see that it has not been replaced. Headliner the same way. It's a little tiny bit of discoloration, but it, it's the original headliner in the car. It's not a snow white color. It's more of a cream. Cream on the outside, creamy white, and a creamy white interior also. The upholstery on the car appears to be the original upholstery that came on this car. I know the door panels are. You can see a little tiny bit of a wave through it, you know, just from uh, warpage through the years. There's cardboard backing on the back of these things, and through the years they will tend to warp a little bit. And that's what you have, but it's originality. You're not going to replace it. Um, again, the upholstery on the doors with the original molded door handle armrests are still intact. Um, chrome, of course the wing opens on the crank, uh, door actuator, and the power, uh, power window, yeah, arm power window. Um, all the chrome on them is just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Same with the back. <coughs> we got trash trays in the rear. And where the um, cloth is down the side of the doors, that transitions back along the back part of this car and also onto the kick panels. If you notice, there's a, um, cloth on them also that, that continues on from the door. A really high-end addition to this thing. 
Again, the uh, hat rack in the back is absolutely like new, so I'm going to say that it has been replaced. The rear seat does not to appear have ever been uh, messed with. The same with the carpeting in this car. A little tiny bit of fade to it, but I think it started life as a dark gray, and I think that's what it still is. A little bit of brownish here and there just from sun fade, but uh, certainly nothing that you would think about replacing. Uh, all the trim on the inside, all your trim around the windows, around the... Uh, Headliner of the car, the tops of the doors, all that is original paint yet. I don't see where it's ever been taken off and repainted. Chrome on the dash is just exemplary. Nice clean instrument cluster. Uh, you have a speedometer. You have, by the way, these things, if I remember correctly, had an overdrive tranny in them. They had a four speed transmission in them, uh, which was really, really top end for the day. Uh, this is just about as nice a car as you could ever find. Steering wheel. A couple little marks on it. I don't see any big, huge cracks in it or anything. A couple of little tiny cracks uh, in the paint and the finish of the wheel, but no wide um, gaps in it or anything from shrinkage through the years. Uh, horn that works. The trim, the chrome on the uh, center part of the steering wheel with the Oldsmobile moniker in the center of it and your old Oldsmobile uh, horn ring, just as nice and fresh as could possibly be. Chrome. Might be crows, but I'm going to call it polished aluminum or stainless on the dash behind the radio, which, by the way, is the original radio in this vehicle. It's an AM radio, uh, but it is original. Heater controls, nice and fresh and clean yet. Everything is just as nice as you'd ever want to find on this vehicle. A lot of clarity to the plastic on those gauges yet, which is really odd to have a car that old with that much uh, uh, definition to it. Um, it's just a great car. I mean, this thing is, the seats are not caved in or anything. They have a nice uh, a bounce to them yet, a nice padding on the uh, uh, rear seat, front seat, the backs of it. You can see everything is just as nice and fresh as you'd ever want to find. Uh, clock also, right in the center of the uh, dash on top, which the dash transitions down, but it also has uh, like a chrome um, grate that goes between the uh, um, base of the windshield and the dashboard. Really a lot of high-end uh, details to this vehicle. Just as nice a vehicle as you'd ever want to find. I believe that these, the door rubbers have been replaced. They're a little bit too fresh and too resilient to have been original. I think these are original, but they do not need replaced. Sun visors just as nice as can be. None of the stitching coming loose. Day-night mirror. I think we covered it all. This is a great interior for 1957 J2 Rocket Oldsmobile. Fantastic car, and it's here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach. If you're into a 1950s muscle car, this is your guy. Take a look at it. Okay, we're in our 57 J2 Olds. Let's see what we got here. Well, we got a speedometer. I know that's going to work here in a minute. Uh, the fuel gauge is working. Shows that we have just about a quarter, a little bit under a quarter of a tank. Uh, turn signal left. It should be lighting up there. It is not. Turn signal right is lighting up there and indicating. Uh, horn. Horn works. Radio. Nope. Radio doesn't work. That's about common. And also the clock does not work. I don't think it does anyway. Let's go for rides, see what this guy drives like. I haven't driven this car yet. Oh, not sure what car. Let's see what we got here. Tranny shifts just the way it should. Let's see once we straighten out here if it goes straight. Okay, let's see. No hands on the wheel. Going straight as an arrow. Still going straight. No hands. Alright, let's try brakes, no hands. Where this car goes over. Okay, brakes, no hands. Oh. Stop straight. Try it again here. Stop straight as an arrow. Just have to have an aim straight to begin with.
Go straight. The steering is nice and responsive for, for 1957, anyway. Um, it's a car you can take and drive anywhere you want to go in it. it. Seems like it has ample power. The brakes work well. They don't pull. No rattle, shakes, shimmies, squeaks. Pretty much nothing. Speedometer is working as it should, it doesn't pulse or anything, it works just perfectly. It works just like it should. Hi, you're Hank Sirs, and we're going to present the undercarriage of a 1957 J2 Oldsmobile 88. This isn't your garden variety olds. This thing is a very, very special car. Tri-power engine, tons of horsepower, over 300 back in 1957. Pretty serious car. Uh, new shocks in the front. Uh, appears that the steering box is either new or been refurbished, one of the two. You can see there's no leaks on the engine. That's unique. Oil filters on the uh, uh, side of the uh, uh, oil pan. That's pretty slick. Stainless steel exhaust on this vehicle, uh, complete from the uh, cast iron manifolds the whole way back. Looks to be about two and an eighth inch. We'll call them two and an eighth inch. No leaks from the uh, bell housing area. Also, uh, original starter, original, pretty much everything on this vehicle. The uh, front end on the vehicle is completely different than a conventional uh, Chevy or, or you know General Motors car at that area. This is very very heavy duty front end on this. No marks or anything on the uh, um, cradle in the front from people jacking it up and absolutely none on the sides. little ding right here uh, from someone putting a jack stand or something through the years. That could easily be straightened out. There's not much of a ding though. It's about the size of a half dollar and a little bit of an indentation. That's pretty much it. The frame on these vehicles is just absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe the structural uh, strengths that they went to to uh, uh, engineer this car. I'm getting off track here. Uh, overdrive transmission. Uh, I believe these are a four-speed overdrive. Back in 1957 yet, the Hydromatic, they were a heck of a transmission at that time. Uh, new U-joint in the front, no leaks on the tail shaft, no leaks on the transmission, uh, or the linkage or the e-speedometer housing uh, and, and gear also. The frame on this thing is so structurally uh, reinforced, I, I, I can't really believe it. They're, they're, it's just not a standard C-channel perimeter frame that goes toward the back. They do have that, which is much heavier duty than it would have been like on a uh, Chevy for that era. But in addition to that, they have a real heavy, about an eighth of an inch thick, actually even more than that, uh, I-beam type of an X brace that Ford used to engineer with their vehicles, usually with all their convertibles at that time. This thing is a hard top and it has its X bracing in addition to the original C-channel perimeter frame that these cars were engineered with. Structural reinforcements everywhere on this vehicle. This thing, there's no way in the world you'd have any torsional twist with this chassis. Absolutely none. Uh, again, the uh, two and eighth inch uh, um, stainless steel exhaust system that's on this vehicle. Also the mufflers appear to be stainless. Uh, parking brake is uh, original and functional. Um, I have no idea where the brake lines or the uh, fuel line is. They have them tucked up out of there somewhere that I can't really see. But uh, uh, there's absolutely no way that I can, unless they're underneath there, that I can't see because of our uh, um, lift. The floor pans on this are the original floor pans. There's absolutely no deterioration, no rust, uh, no degrading whatsoever to them. Absolutely none. There's no jack marks on them in any place. Uh, this stuff is so strong, the, the metal on this vehicle is so strong that even if you did put a jack on it, you'd never done it anyway. It's that thick and that uh, structurally strong. Again, the floor pans, we're halfway back through this thing and honestly there's absolutely nothing. 
It's just like it was in 1957, still has the original factory splattered undercoating on it. Um, see no leaks whatsoever in the transmission, the uh, uh, engine itself, and we just had the oil changed in it. Um, huge, huge drum brakes on the front of this. I don't know what they are. I'm going to call them at least 11 inch. Uh, but they completely fill, they fill, they appear to be uh, finned uh, uh, drums, but they completely fill that 14-inch uh, uh, wheel that's on this vehicle. A fantastic looking uh, uh, vehicle on the undercarriage. It is completely original. Let's do the other half, see what we find there. Okay, second half of RJ2, and uh, Olds 88. Uh, fantastic condition underneath this thing. You can see the floorboards completely original. Never disrupted, never messed up in any way that I can de uh, determine anyway. Leaf spring rear suspension uh, still has a nice curvature to the leafs, uh, multi-leaf rear springs, one, two, three, four, five leaf uh, stacked rear suspension, original gas tank, still has the original drain plug in it, no dents in the tank whatsoever, the uh, well for the spare tire, again, no dents in it. Most of the time those things are banged from people driving over something or other through the years. This one has no d denser marks in it that I can determine. A uh, set of newer shocks in the back. All the structural supports underneath uh, and all your tie-in uh, supports through the floorboards are just as uh, uh, new as they were in 1957. Again, look at this X bracing and the C-channel perimeter frame. So you got a channel frame like it would be on a uh, a full-size uh, GM car at that point of time, and the additional X bracing that's at least an eighth of an inch, more like three sixteenths of an inch in thickness, but there's no way in the world you'd ever bend. Uh, fantastic chassis on this vehicle. Uh, Heavy-duty rear differential on this thing. I have no idea what it is. Uh, I'm not familiar with some of these early uh, cars, these 50s cars, but this thing is absolutely uh, a real heavy duty looking uh, rear differential. It has a pinion snubber on it, so they uh, at least compensated for torque uh, twist, which I'm sure this engine made a lot of. 300 horsepower back in the uh, uh, middle 50s. Again, the gas tank has the original drain plug, no dents on the tank itself. Um, a lot of originality there. The uh, well where the uh, uh, spare tire goes, uh, there's no dents or marks or bangs or anything on it. Most of them have those through the years. Uh, front, uh, front and rear wheel wells, um, metal the way they should be, and just as nice and solid as uh, you could ever hope to find. Structural bracing across the back is just, uh, this is a really well engineered piece of equipment here, the way they uh, did the uh, framework on this car. I can't believe that there's anything ever made any stronger than this. I know Ford used this X bracing in their convertibles, but this guy's a hard top, it's not a convertible. Drop downs in the quarters are just as fresh and nice as they were in 1957. It is an original tin car. I don't see anything that's been replaced through the years in the rocker panels or any of the uh, uh, metal areas. Uh, Jesus, uh, the brakes in the back are huge drums, the same as, uh, as they are up front. Newer shocks in the back also. Uh, the undercarriage of this car is just exemplary. It's as nice a 50s car as you could ever hope to find with a lot of that originality from 1957 yet. Fantastic condition. You can see no leaks on the drive line. Complete stainless steel exhaust system from front to back. Um, floor pans, all your structural bracing and everything just as fresh as you could ever hope to find. This is a very special car. This is not just a plain 57 Oldsmobile 88. Uh, this car had over 300 horsepower back in 1957. Uh, it's a car that if you're into a uh, uh, 50s muscle car, this is your guy. You really need to take a look at it. It's here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Devin will have about 90 still high resolution photos for you to examine. And I know we've done at least a uh, half hour video presentation on it. So uh, uh, we're trying to give you all the information that we can on the videos and the still photos because we know everyone can't come down. We encourage everyone to come down and look at these vehicles, but we know they can't. If they live in Tacoma, Washington, or Bangor, Maine, you know, it's hard for them to get away, uh, especially at that distance, to come look. But that's why we're doing these videos, so that you can see exactly what you would see if you came down here and looked at the car. Hangster State, Tona Beach.